Hello my friends, welcome to my video. In my last video, I talked about why Helm is needed in the first place. We talked about like how when you use kubectl to manage your application deployments, it can get like tedious because when you have like multiple applications or multiple environments or multiple clouds where your application will be deployed, then basically if you if you're using kubectl it's going to get like really tedious right because you need to deploy the files in a certain sequence and you need to like whenever you roll back you need to keep track of things manually so it can get complicated so i talked about all this in the last video in this video we're going to start with uh, helm introduction right now helm is basically the kubernetes package manager right like this is what is going to help you manage packages now you have helm charts which is basically the package right so helm is going to help you to apply your helm charts install your helm charts and upgrade your helm charts now helm charts will basically look like this so you will have one directory which is the name of the helm chart itself and inside that directory you're going to have chart.yaml i'll show you what's in it it's going to show you the name of the helm chart and like there's some versions and descriptions and can also contain dependencies in helm 3 so i'll show you what it it contains and then there's a charts directory where you can put the dependencies if there are any dependencies uh, for your application you can put it here templates templates directory is going to contain um, the template files or the yaml files for your application like let's say in this case there's going to be a deployment yaml file that's the that's the main resource and there's going to be service there's going to be an ingress resource there's going to be a horizontal pod auto scaler and then you have all these yaml files which are going to basically create the resources for your application right and then you have the helpers.tpl which is basically a file where you can put like some functions and and these functions can be invoked from these files so now you have the test directory where you can like put some you know manifest or yaml files and then let's say helm is going to install or deploy your application in kubernetes cluster it's basically going to um, deploy the application install the application and then it's going to run some tests so tests uh you know this directory or this feature is is basically it's there i've not seen it being used that much okay which is fine okay and then you have the values.yaml which contains the default values for your application and um, you'll understand what i mean okay let's get into each of these things and then uh, let's do a deep dive okay now chart.yaml okay like i said it's going to contain the api version which is basically the, basically the helm version right if you see like v1 that means we are using helm version 2 if you seeing like v2 we are going to use helm 3 okay and then the name of the chart is my chart and then you have the version and this is the chart version like don't miss uh, take this for uh, the application version itself so this is the chart version okay and then the app version is uh, is basically your application version your service version okay and then you can have like an optional description and like i said you can even put dependencies in here like for example let's say your microservice requires like uh, another service like a database service like readers or mongodb you can put that in here and then you can um, put the put the chart files the package for that dependency in your charts directory remember like in the last slide we showed you like a charts directory you can put the the chart files in that directory for your dependencies okay then then it will deploy those things first and then deploy this application okay so that's that's really cool so this is like a helm 3 feature in helm 2 you'd have to put that in in another file called requirements.yaml and then they've changed things in helm 3 okay now let's move on to the other files okay so let's look at one of the resource yaml files right like you know i showed deployment.yaml uh, let's say like we are deploying MongoDB, right? Which is like a database. Whenever you have like a stateful application, you're going to have stateful set resource, right? See, kind equal to stateful set. For example, I'll, I want to bring your attention to this one, right? You can see there's like an include and then there's the name of the function, 
right and then in some places you have dot values dot replica account now these things are going to be substituted with values from either the values dot yaml and then the values can be passed uh, you know from command line command line when you run like helm install command or helm upgrade command um, or it can even come from this helpers.tpl that I showed you now the you know I, I'll show you like an example of uh, a function a little you know a couple of minutes later but basically this is how the the files in the templates directory will look like it's going to have some functions some values but basically uh, it's not like a raw yaml file that we are kind of used to especially if you're just beginning to learn kubernetes you might just put the values literally in the in these yaml files uh in in helm charts you're going to have like all these placeholder values uh or placeholder variables and values for which will get substituted at runtime okay now values.yaml right so i said like it's going to contain like some default values for your application in this case the replica account uh, image name and then the repository name all these things are in in values.yaml so in, in fact it will contain a lot more uh, properties uh, in 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 real time but this is how it looks actually it contains like basically the default values for your application properties now the helpers.tpl this is how uh, a function looks like right you know you have this in this case it's called mongodb.full name right so this is an example of like why you might need a function right so let's say like you have something called environment like you know a, a, a property that you're maintaining let's say in production alone like this property is set to like environment that type is set to prod right then you want your uh, your database name to be mongodb prod otherwise it's going to be mongodb non prod so this is a simple example of like you know a simple logic that you can bury in in helper does helpers tpl okay so these are like various functions uh sorry various files that you can have right in this case you can see like you know i'm just calling include mongodb full name so basically like based on which environment it is your uh, your pod name or the deployment name is going to change or the stateful set name is going to change right okay so that's like a really quick uh, summary like introduction of helm if you haven't subscribed to this channel please subscribe if you have any questions please comment you know please like the video and share so that like you know I we can spread the knowledge my channel can grow and all that that's the only thing I ask of you and uh, thank you so much for your time Thank you.